Hey, bro. Can I borrow your t-shirt? Why do you, you gonna ask a million questions or let me borrow your shirt? Hey, okay, fine. Here. Thanks. Where's my t-shirt? Can I have it back? <laughs> I just used that for toilet paper and you want to wear it again? <laughs> Gross. Everybody, this is Praxis. We've all been seeing on the news recently that in a lot of places people are just going crazy about toilet paper, which doesn't make a lot of sense to go crazy about toilet paper but not food, because if you're not eating, you don't have to worry about the pooping part. But I wanted to do a video today about another way of managing the problem that is managed by toilet paper without having any toilet paper. If you didn't have any, it's really not that huge of a deal. When my boy was uh, a baby, uh, we used cloth diapers, and you can tell where I'm going with this. Cloth diapers. I know a lot of people are very squeamish about it. It seems like a horrible thing, but of all the responsibilities that are uh, associated with having a newborn, I'm going to be honest that the cloth diaper aspect was the least awful of all of them. You know, the waking up in the middle of the night thing, the constant having to feed things. I'm not complaining. It's a wonderful process and, you know, it was a great time and great memories in my life. But of all the things that were difficult, the cloth diapers were really way less of a hassle than I anticipated that they would be. They're kind of like owning chickens. Whenever people talk about getting chickens, they, they're always nervous about it. They think it's going to be a big deal. And then they get them and they're like, wow, this is way easier than I ever thought that it would be. I've never owned chickens, so I haven't had that experience myself. But everyone that I talk to that owns chickens has the same kind of reaction. It's like, well, I thought it was going to be horrible, but it really wasn't that bad. Cloth diapers are the same way. And you can use the same idea of cloth diapers for wiping your behind if you have absolutely no toilet paper. And it's way less gross, actually, because when you have a diaper, it's absolutely full of... You know, we're, we're going to have to use the word poop in this video. I'm just going <laughs> to approach it right now. It's absolutely full of poop. And, you know, if you were pooping in a toilet, most of the poop went into the toilet and there's really comparatively very little that's going to be going on your wipes. What I'm uh, going to recommend is just pieces of scrap fabric. Now you can go and you can get special pads that would go into cloth diapers. I'll put a link in the description down below if you want to get those like special poo capable, uh, you know, uh, surfaces and everything. I, you don't need to buy that kind of stuff. This is just, this is a piece of old t-shirt. Someday this t-shirt that I'm wearing right now is going to turn into this. Now we use these as handkerchiefs. I've got a bag of them. They just kind of hang over by the stairs and everyone, if you got to blow your nose, use the handkerchief. We never buy tissues because we use handkerchiefs all the time. Works out really great. And the same thing can be used for your butt. So, uh, all the words that you usually try to avoid using in YouTube videos, we're going to be using them all today. So there is a process that can make it uh, a lot uh, cleaner and easier and less gross for you. You know, it's still probably going to be kind of gross, but I want to share with you what I used to do with uh, my boys' cloth diapers. And I came up with a two-bucket system for, uh, for managing them. One bucket takes... Uh, the majority of the poop and the second bucket was a soak bucket for afterwards so after i would take the cloth diapers they would usually have quite a bit of poop on them like all the poop because you know he wasn't going in a toilet all went into the diaper and the first step was to have a bucket that i would scrape his cloth diapers into so you get the majority of the stuff down into this bucket now uh if you're familiar with the idea of a composting toilet this is pretty much a composting toilet at this point because you're putting poop in and poo is really high in nitrogen and you want to pair, uh, when you're doing composting, you want to pair a high nitrogen content item, the, you know, like, you know, fruit or poop in this case, with a high carbon item like, uh, you know, wood chips, sawdust, um, leaves, uh, any kind of like, you know, like hay, that kind of stuff. Anything that's like organic material that isn't green and mushy and soupy. You want to mix it in and you want to have a ratio of somewhere around uh, three parts carbony material, like a dry sawdust, to one part nitrogeny material, like the poop. Uh, you don't have to be exact with that. I'm just telling you, just scale of magnitude. It doesn't want to be half and half. You want to have a little bit more of the dry stuff than you do of the moist, mushy stuff. So we scrape the poop in here. We add some sawdust. We add some leaves. We add, you know, any kind of, you know, 
carbon rich sort of material, put in there. That helps to, uh, for it to break down. That also helps to keep the smell down so it won't smell as much. I'm not going to guarantee it's going to smell like roses out of there, but if you put a lot of carbon material in there, it kind of wicks the moisture away and it has a breakdown in a way that does, isn't like putrefaction, it's composting. So once we have the rag, uh, you know, kind of scraped off, the next step is it's not, not clean. You're not going to put it right back into reuse. You put it into a soap bucket and this bucket would have soap and water in it. And you put a bunch of these uh, uh, rags in there and let them sit for, you know, several days, you know, until you're ready to do some laundry and, and clean them off. Now, after they've been sitting in there for a while, you want to go in and you want to kind of like squeeze them out and get most of whatever's left of the material out into the water. Uh, you, you probably should use rubber gloves. I think half the time I used rubber gloves when I was doing it, but I get kind of lazy and as long as I didn't have like cuts on my hands, I would usually just put my hands right in and I never had any ill effects from that. But if you want to be safe, you probably want to be using gloves. It might not be a bad idea to have a face shield or goggles on uh, so that like if it splashes, it's not getting in your eye. You know, whatever you feel you need to do because this uh, material, it's kind of like a biohazard at that point because it's got poop in there. Even though you have the soap in there, you want to be a little careful with it. But you want to take the rags. At this point, they aren't going to, it's not, there's not going to be any like clumps on them at this point because you got all the clumps off here. You're going to like kind of squeeze them out, um, take them, you know, get them as dry as you can and then put them into some kind of a you know, container and then bring that container for your wash. We did that for, I don't, I don't remember, like many months. I forget how long my boy was in diapers, but we did that the entire time he was in diapers. It worked out really, really well. This stuff we composted down and I just brought it out into my landscape and I, you know, put it around trees and things like that. I, you know, I'm not going to grow potatoes out of human excrement stuff, but uh, you know, it, it is a good compost material and I was able to use it for that. You could also take this stuff and, you know, if you can kind of gather it up together, you could just flush it right down your toilet and, and kind of go uh, in that way. But the basic idea is any kind of old rags that you have, old t-shirts, old jeans, old whatever, use those guys, scrape off the mo uh, majority of it into some kind of bucket, soak them in another bucket for a number of days in soapy water, and then just launder the, uh, the things and they're ready to go back into service again. I hope that you find that helpful. I I hope you never have to do it, but really, realistically, if you ever ha did have to do that, it's really not that big of a deal. It's, you know, it's gross, but you know, we're living creatures. We're gross. That's what we do. We're, we're constantly sweating. There's like ooze coming out of our skin. We're just disgusting living creatures. And we, we try to forget that most of the time and we're pretty good at ignoring it. But the reality is, is that there's just stuff coming out of us everywhere. And you know, it's just, it's just part of life. And if you can deal with it, you can make your life a little less horrifying if you can be a little less horrified by yourself and the fact that we're living creatures and we poop. That's it. Thanks for watching. This episode is brought to you in part by Burning Hearth Homestead, a nonprofit that aims to provide seeds, live plants, and education to the community, both local and extended. Plant seeds, plant knowledge, plant the future. If you'd like to thank them for supporting this channel or find out more about what they do, go to burninghearthhomestead.org. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.